man, my homeboy has a very expensive production chain. And you can hear the difference. You can definitely hear the difference. Bolo! Hey, before we get started, make sure you guys go ahead and check out Analog Cases. It is the number one place for you guys to go to to get cases to protect your gear. So if you have some gear, whether it's audio interfaces, MIDI controllers, DJ equipment, keyboards, they have it for everything you can just about think of. So go ahead and click that link in the description and go ahead and check out Analog Cases right now. Also, if you guys need some equipment, go ahead and uh, click that link in the description and go to zounds.com. They have a whole bunch of items on the site that you can get with no credit or background check. It's not all the stuff on the site, but it's a good amount of stuff on the site that you can get with no credit or background check. So go ahead and click that link in the description and head over to zounds.com right now and pick up some today. All right, so earlier today, I went to go see one of my producer homeboys, Javar Rockmore. He is a multi-platinum producer that has produced a lot of hit records for Moneybag Yo and for a lot of other people as well. And we got to meet up with the Loopholes, which they are the other two that Javar actually produces with. Shout out to brother Bobby Keys and brother Stoney. They have platinum placements as well together. And so I decided to go ahead and bring the Sequential Profit Rev 2 over there so we can run it through his very expensive chain of equipment. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna run through his whole analog processing chain. We ran the profit through it, of course, and we made a few beats. Um, the camera actually kind of cut off, but I got a little bit of footage of that. But just him explaining the chain is more than enough to make me think that I might wanna, you know, I might wanna check out a few things. I don't know if I'm gonna get the whole thing, but a few things. But yeah, it was very fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So. Let's get to it. Yes, yeah, sir, we got this thing hooked up. Is that FL Studio? Damn, I don't, I don't think the people watching at home understand what, what they're viewing or having the pleasure to yeah. do. He's, this is the most humble, modest guy you ever gonna meet. I put Bobby Keys against anybody. <laughs> on the on these black and white, black and white. ivory and her, and what's it, white? Or what is it? Yeah, ivory to black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's better than my man. I'm telling you. So, and they have, and they have the placements to. It's all subjective. Oh man, <laughs> he he got the accolades to prove it. Do your homework. He's worked with all your favorite artists, um, Future, Nipsey. Shit. I mean, all the shit I've done, he's been on. Bag, Wayne. What happened to that sound? That sounds right. What you want to do? One last one. The look, the good, the good. Which is Bobby Keys, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all gotta know Bobby Keys, man. Look up, look up the credits, and you'll see Bobby Keys. Mm -hmm. he's platinum producer. So, and, and he is the man on the keys. We're about to put it through his paces. We're going to find out, which we know that this is. I mean, this has been on too many records. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Bobby's going to put it through his paces. Turn the phone. Oh, man. You can't get out and play today, man. You got to chill out today, man. I like to make the beat and then record the artist as we're making the beat. We might not even be done with the beat, we might shit, only got the drums or no drums. It might just be keys on the keys, literally. <laughs> and um, artist goes in, say the artist goes in, kills it, you know what I'm saying? And then we can build the beat. And as we're building the beat, the artist is coming up with stuff, jumping on the mic. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful process. You gotta, you gotta, let, them, you gotta let them know what this is, man. So basically what we got is a, we got a rig is what I call it. Um, <laughs> and I mean, I could get into the journey of how I got to the rig or you want me to, how you want me to do it? You want me to explain Man, just, the journey? Just go, just go one by one with me. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Shelford channel. Shout out uh, Hooper Need Designs. Love those guys over there. Shout out Chris. Um, he's been a big help, um, but I, I bought a channel strip. Hey, actually shout out Bobby Key. <laughs> Started uh, to do references, I was writing writing records for other artists and um I, I had an apollo an apollo uh solo and i was using that you know the um what is it called the um you know the the, the, the plugins that they use. yeah 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 i forget the what they call the unison it. stuff the unison yeah, yeah, yeah. which is good um but i started to really get into the recording process and keys had a um he actually he actually gave it to me um 
It's not Apollo. What the hell is it? The Volt? No, no, no. It's the oh, actual uh, preamp. It's yeah. the preamp with the LA 2A. It's oh, the, oh, oh, the LA 610. I mean, the LA Yeah, 16. the same one I got in my spot. Okay, yeah, yeah so yeah. Keys had an LA 610 he wasn't using. I said, yo, let me use that real quick. I just want to experiment. I didn't have, I had a um, AKG C414. 414. Yeah, 414. I had one of those. The moment I put plugged the mic into the preamp, it was, it was over with. It was over. And listen, I'm here to tell you, the plugins are great. They do a great job. There's no substitution for what the actual hardware does, the outboard gear does. No substitution. None. None. So, okay. So, so how, okay, how, how do you got this running in here? Okay, so right. basically, we have, I'll just go down the chain. Okay. Even though I'm a, this is the last in the chain, it just wouldn't fit weird, weird. But anyways, first things first is gonna be the Army. All right, this is my interface, the UFX3, highly recommend. Tons of IO, more than you can shake a stick at. Uh, zero latency, the, the best clocks in the game. I mean, I can't say, I can't rave enough about it. It's one of the best uh, devices you can buy as far as the interface is concerned. Uh, and they last, Forever. I mean, you got people who bought interface from RME still using it 10 years ago. Then I have my A day. Now, with with this, of so course, it's basically it's an A, it's an A to D, the D to A converter. It's a whole, just basically a whole converter. Yeah, but it's it's more A to. It's just a very high end A to. Because you know, with when you're going digital and analog, and and you know you're incorporating, it's all about your converters. So. You may get, you may have a high end converter, but if you got an ADAT and you're using, you know, for ins and outs, that converter matters as well. So you want to get a high end ADAT, no disrespect to the, to the A800s of the world. And the ADAT is going into the 5057 orbit summit mixer by Rupert Neve Designs. Shout out Rupert Neve Designs again, highly recommended. In fact, if you're a producer who doesn't, who wants to get into outboard gear but doesn't know where to start, I would highly suggest starting with the 5057 Orbit. Now, it's a little complicated if you if you never used analog gear in terms of hooking it up, but once you get it hooked up, it's, it's I mean, it's four buttons and, and it's a knob. I mean, you can't, <laughs> can't, you can't mess, mess that up. But essentially what it does is it sums your buses together. So like in FL, if you pan to this screen, I have my drum bus, I have my music bus, I have my box, my vocal bus, lead bus, all that. And you go in the Fruity Loops and you would change your out, your um, your your output to, to the respective channels, A at one or whatever, whatever you got going. And it sums those buses to one sound. It glues them together, it runs through these transformers. They got the silk, the blue, the red. I love I love both of them, the blue and the red. It just depends on what you're doing. And when you drive that the trim knob, it gives it that analog weight. That you know, so it's just something you can get into. It's like two grand. It's gonna make your your beat sound better immediately. Like as soon as you start using it, mm. it's no fluff, it's no gimmicks. It's just gonna make it sound good. Shout out Rupert Neve. All right, so from there, the the um the orbit goes into these two shelfer channels and this was the first piece of gear that i bought changed my life i was i told you over the phone i was i was this close to retiring another another story too too much to get into but <laughs> the music industry man they play too much so but this when i started to twist these knobs and and hear what was coming out of the transformers it changed my musical trajectory it, it made me I fell in love, and I got the bug. He got the bug. I, I kept telling y'all, man. <laughs> Forty grand later. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe not that much. <laughs> Maybe that much. Maybe more. I I don't even want to think about it. But the Shelfords are amazing. Quick overview of them. Your Mike Crees, um, super cool. You got your your high pass filters. You got your trim knobs. Which if you turn your trim knobs, you can drive things in the chain more. And that's how Rupert Neve sets up everything. They have these trim knobs, so you know you can drive other. It's they thought this through basically. And then you got um, an inductive EQ, great. Um, which it's funny because I go through phases. I was like, oh, I don't really use it, but then 
like we're using it now and I, I love it on, on certain things. But my favorite part of this is the diode compressors. Just super beefy, weighty, colorful character. When I first got them though, it was very hard to tame. I didn't really like them because they, if you drive them too hard, they can be noisy. But if you know how to use this on drums, no substitute. And um, then it goes into arguably my other favorite piece of the artist. Oh, this is my favorite. It goes into the Master Bus processor. What a cool. Amazing. Amazing. Ooh. Amazing. I mean, this is, I mean, it's, I would say it's underrated, but it's not because if you go on any of the websites, it's a bestseller. But it has this stereo field editor, and that's essentially like mid side control. Mm. And it's just, it's the gift that keeps on giving for me with this uh, Master Bus processor. Every beat that I've made this past year has been ran through this chain. It all gets run through this. Every song that we've recorded, with uh, Tay 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 recorded through this. All right, and last but not least, the most important, not the most important, but I say the thing that really like sealed it for me that I was like, oh shit, this sounds like, I mean, we'll just record vocals. It immediately sound like the song is done. The burrow, the burrow. What it does is it's a converter, but it has transformers in it. So this is not a clean converter. This is not like a, um, the, the famous Josh converter or, um, you know, a prism or, or the labyrinth go. This is not, this is a straight up character box and you can drive this transformer. They recommend starting at 18. I bounce everything at 12. I don't care. <laughs> Sue me. Tell the engineer, I'm sorry. Kev, no credit. I'm sorry when I send these over to you. They drove hard. But yeah, I, I mean, this is, this is the master chain for me. Everything is ran through there. Now, what we got on this side over here? This is the best vocal chain known to men, and I'll put it against anybody. Take the best <laughs> challenge, come on. Whoever want it, come get it. Best vocal chain of all time to me. Um, what I have, Ooh. and shout out to Hazel Rig Industries, their subsidiary of uh, DW Fern, the big red compressors and stuff. I've never, used a piece of equipment that sounded as good as those two. It's a it's a um, a channel strip, but it's it's an it's a preamp with a pool tech style EQ. And then you got the compressor which is a I think I can't remember it's like a PWM pulse with something. Super technical rocket science type of stuff and um, it's just unreal. And then we run it through the uh, locomotive which is another boutique style, bare beam compressor, super, um, just, I mean, if you love tubes, so the Hazel Rigs are very clean. Like people think, oh, it's tube based, so it's dirty. No, Hazel Rig is very clean, pristine, exact. This is where you get the character from. And essentially what I'm doing is it's like a, um, how they do uh, an 1176 with an LA-2A. Yeah. So this would essentially be my LA, I mean my uh, 76, catching all the fast peaks and stuff. And then this will be like my LA 2A. So the results I'm getting with my Telefunken 251. You got a Telefunken, y'all. I went and got one, I did, sorry. <laughs> got a Telefunken, look, it, look, there goes the base of it right up there. Ain't right. no, you need to break it out. Ain't no gimmicks over here. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Hey man, let me tell you, producing something too. I'm not being funny. I've always dreamed on in this mic, and I got it. Ooh, can I just touch? Let me just touch. Yeah. It. Let me touch. Ooh. Let you me. want to lay some vocals? Let me do your tag over this. Let me say, boom, low. <laughs> Might need to make some uh, you some uh, no. some of my Instagram reels with it. <laughs> but I use this a lot. I use the UAD. Um. Oh, that's dope. The, that is dope. The I, the SD one. I like it a lot. Now, now, what we're trying to figure out, he has just about everything and then as you guys see i bought the sequential over here -wee. you know what i'm saying bobby key's already been making something crazy with it but we have just one question mm -hmm. now you got all this mm -hmm. but what you gonna do with these speakers man i'm torn i don't know where i want to go um so look we, we're gonna ask the audience yeah yeah please help me out man because okay let me tell y'all what i want 
Because I've been now struggling. he's gonna get everything treated. Is this is just a temporary setup? But yep. when he gets his his actual room, he's gonna get everything done the right way. We just need to know for what he's doing. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? What's your opinion on what he should get? And I like um I like transparency. I'll get a sub. So I want my monitors to be transparent. But I, I you know I want some you know I want some fight in them. You know, because people come over and turn, you know what I'm saying, crank it. I might not crank it, but, you know, people will crank it. So, I don't want a, a, a system that's going to blow. Love ATCs, love Focals. They can be a little delicate, though. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I really wanted to show this setup because I wanted to show producers, like, I don't care where I'm at. I'm setting up. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> setting up. You know, I'm an NPC guy. Yes, sir. For all the people out there who are using FL, Mm-hmm. This basically shows them that you can not only use FL, yep. but run it through some very, very, very good gear. Yep. And it makes a huge difference. Yeah. I have, you gotta understand, I have all my beats. So I have the beats pre this, I have the beats post this. And you can say, oh, you just got better. Overnight, no, it doesn't work that way. So right now, you're saying, I'm for saying, sure a thousand percent that running your stuff through real analog gear mm -hmm. the real gear yep makes that ten five eight three percent difference to get you to that almost that hundred percent yeah for sure i mean we'll take it back because they keep reposting this clip shout out to producer grad and producer culture and uh, everybody um it's like a car Right? So the Teslas are super fast. Right? They they off the off the dirt. But you know, once they get to a certain speed, that that Lambo, that McLaren, <laughs> is gonna is gonna just go past it. You know what I'm saying? They they can't a Tesla can't go 210 miles per hour. And that's essentially what this is. It's like, do you need it? No, no. You know what I'm saying? You absolutely don't need it. Um, does it make for better sonics? Absolutely, because you got to think, man, and not to get too deep. It's all vibrations and frequencies. So uh, from an atomic level, okay, we're literally vibrating. They built the pyramids with sound, okay? They didn't use it with ones and zeros. I'm telling you that now. Hmm. These frequencies, when you twist the knobs, I'm not making this up. You feel it, it's something in it. And I've heard that for years from all the engineers and they don't even equate it to that. They just say, oh, it always feels better with the knobs. It just feels better. No, I think it's something scientific to it. And me being the type of person I am, you know, I realized that now nah, it's the frequencies. When you touch this and the music is playing, you feel it, you feel what's going on. Like, it makes a difference to me. And if people hear it and say it doesn't make a difference, that doesn't break my heart. I mean, <laughs> it's, you know, I hear it. And I, that's, that's what matters. It's, it, it's the creative, just like the, this whole space. It's for me to be creative and, and have a vibe and just make the best music possible. And you know, I've, I've done pretty well in my career. And instead of going to buy jewelry, mm -hmm. a nice car, I got a nice car. <laughs> but instead of go, you know, just blow money on, on, on dumb things, I invested in gear, you know, and this stuff is not cheap. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going this way unless you're actually making money from music. Like, if you're not making money, don't just get you, you know, an Apollo. You just use the use the UAD plugins and, you know, and call it a day. Or even, you know, they got cheap, they got cheap um hardware that is not cheap. Five hundred series, something. Five hundred like series that yeah. that are amazing. Which I'm actually um about to get a five hundred series. It's just like what I told you earlier. I can't do. Everything I got here, I use on the day. So, if I get something, I have to use it because I don't want to it's expensive. But number two is, I don't like just having stuff to have it. I need to use it. When you buy something like this, you're going to keep it for a very long time and you're oh, going to yeah. use it. It's not like you're just yeah. buying it just because you're going to use that. And yes. then you don't have to buy anything else. Yes. Because you have pretty much the top of the top line gear. And then now instead of you buying this piece for $200, mm -hmm. this piece for $800, this piece for $400, this, and you're trying to replicate it, you might as well just go out. And spend the $4,000 on a preamp. And just get it. <laughs> <laughs> but look, 
all jokes aside, you don't want to, you don't have to spend this level of money, right? Why did I do it? Because I got the bug, I had it, and it, it, I like the way these things sound. I had a vision, um, I had a certain, I wanted a boutique sound, I wanted something different. You know, that's why I didn't go get 1073s, because everybody got 1073s. So I wanted something different, you know, and um, the Orbit, all this changed my life one by one, right? Um, but when you're buying analog gear, right, I tell people this, these two devices right here, they're eventually going to become dated. Mm -hmm. um, the technology is just going to become dated. Uh, well, RME, again, they are incredible with updating and keeping their systems run. Like I said, it's people who bought their interface 10 years ago. I go to a studio all the time that has one of the first fire faces. It's like 12 so, years old. So they, are they that much better than like the UAB? I, I would think so. And I love Universal Audio, their plugins, but um, interface? Killing, I don't know anybody that can hold a counter to RME in terms of clock, for what you get, for what you get. Clocking, conversion, IO, ease of use. I mean, I, I don't know any other interfaces at that price point too. Um, but they will become dated. This stuff though, is for life. Cause it's not running on computers. You feel what I'm saying? This is running off of transformers and electricity. So this is gonna work without being updated, without having to get a new driver or nothing. This is always gonna work. That's why you go in them studios and you see them, the racks of LA-2As and 76s from the 60s, I mean the 70s and 80s, and they, they're still using them, you know? And, I, and shit, go on Vintage King and try to get a used 1176 or a used LA-2A. Like 11 grand for a vintage one. Mm -hmm. I don't think they retail at 4,500. Yeah, that's that. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. And see, that's the thing. That's why y'all see me starting to buy and starting to get stuff like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to bring it by here because he's probably gonna end up buying one. Oh but, no, I'm, I'm gonna get one <laughs> by the end of this. By the end of this video, I'm gonna tell y'all which one I'm gonna get because I've been looking at a few. This is the Rev Two. I've been looking at the OBX module, um, the Ten, the Five, and I, I mean Bolo's graciously explaining the differences between the keyboards. So, uh, yeah, I need I need some analog power. And this is only the eight, so it's only got eight voices in it. So just imagine enough. that 16. Come on now. It's not my specialty, I don't play the piano. That's Bobby Keys, Stoney. <laughs> Stoney's pulling up at some point. Um, that's Soul Sounds. I don't, I don't, I mean, I can. I can get in here and figure some shit out, but I'm not gonna waste y'all time. <laughs> we, got a, we got a video to make. Here. Come on. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run some of this stuff through. Yeah. Hopefully I can get an audio sample or something. Bro, yes, sir. We're you know about to we're about to put it through the Pepsi challenge. Sequential, we about this is profit. Who makes it? Is it sequential makes it? Really, it's sequential, but you gotta give a shout out to Dave Smith. He's the original. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dave Smith. Shout out to so Dave Smith. So usually on these it says sequential right here, but oh, on the original it's ones, it's, it's yeah. Dave Smith. It yeah. says like this. It's the exact same keyboard. I just think that uh, you know, they did a deal with sequential. Yeah. But uh shout out to Dave Smith. He is the man when it comes to when it comes to these. It's even the manual, it's Dave Smith's name inside the manual. Yeah, now nah, uh, you know, in the Oberheim, all we know about him. He's amazing. Like the synth sound, the eighties, he is the eighties sound. But we're gonna run this through. Like I said, we're gonna run this through. We're going in DI through the shelfers. Um, now those are my chords. Those yeah. are not the best rated chords, but they are very good chords. But it's still gonna sound good. And you know what's funny? Shit, it might. It's gonna add character. All oh, this is character, man. We're getting, we're getting character. And as my boy Parker says, texture. <laughs> the texture. Um. So we're gonna run it through that, which in, which in turn is gonna go through the uh, the master bus processor, um, and then it's gonna go into the burrow into the army and then we're going to bust it once we record it and it's going to go through the summon mixer and get all goofy and analog so yeah let's do it yes sir oh no the man is here oh, <laughs> what's good man what's hey, good boy, man. Oh, we got stony in the building i saw you brought that guy through <laughs> <with Chad. laughs> Y'all just make sure y'all use my, you know, my link on zounds.com, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this 816. That's eight. eight. Yep, this is the one I want. This is my next five. 
Ooh, these boys get into their hard work, baby. That's I love to see that, man. Yes, baby, <laughs> feel like a proud uncle over here, man. Stupid. I was. I don't know. The pressure he was doing. Yeah. It was more of like a movement, like a. Don't change the sound. Yeah. Anything if you ever was changed like the pitch or whatever, it'd be cool. I guess. But I can see whatever. That's hard though. You hear that analog crunch? gonna switch to the blue silk. Do red there. And this is uh with the mids. So we'll just turn that up. So now what we do, we're going to run, we're going to do, go through the summon and all that now, which in turn is running it back through the good shit. You feel me? Running it through, gunning it through. We're going to put this on channel one. Well, actually I put my bases on another one. So this is going to be on channel 19 because that's when my mono bus start. And that's the great thing about the orbit. It has a uh, four mono stereo buses so you can mono your you know this could be um your your kicking your snare your lead vocals your bass so forth so on so i like that a lot because it does make a difference and i'll show you here shortly so like for instance the bass the bass is going through uh insert 19 which is going into the bass mix bus which is like really i sometimes use my kick and snare on there it's just a mono bus for me and uh it's on three and four you take it off Not mono. You can hear it. I don't know if they can hear it at all. Yeah, it just makes it mono. It focuses it. And then, you know, we got this, the stereo width and all that. So. Little compression. This uh, MPV also has a really musical limiter where you don't even know it. Like, it's not doing no pumping. You just. Their shit smooth out. And again, like, they have all these trim knobs on here that I can just, you know, really depend on what I want to drive, how I want to drive it. It allows me to, you know, like, it got, it got quieter, but it didn't get quieter. Certain things are just not being driven as hard. So if I turn it up, it's going to give that effect. It's like sort of perceived loudness in a sense, but it's really not. And see what I'll do is, right, follow me, I'll bounce this down as one jump, you feel what I'm saying, one wave, and work with all of these. So y'all see. So right now my plan is I'ma bounce this down as one. I'ma take one of these, pitch that up, I'm gonna take one of them, pitch that up. I might half time one of them. I'm it's gonna get crazy. <laughs> like we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. So yeah. Time stretch it. It can get crazy. We can do crazy shit from there. We can. We can EQ it. We can 
we can half time it from here. We spread it up his stuff. We can half time it to give it sort of that that effect. Um, I like reason to rap. To, to reason rap. Just, it went from now keep in mind I'm just gonna the reason rap yeah the reason rap when y'all are using the gourmet Jorge sauce y'all at least knowledge you was watching Bolo's channel I was on here and you seen what I was doing and you and you adopted it look Bobby Keys don't even know I'm sure y'all he said what you do right? Oh, the, the, the rack the racky out man don't worry about it boy got the racky out <laughs> Tip of the day, man. Keep the best musical minds around you at all times. You're not gonna get better by yourself, man. That's it. Don't be afraid to pan. Not just character, either. it really adds, it fills up your beat, believe it or not. Use correctly. And discretion. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know, you gave me the wrong advice. <laughs> I can't give you my ears. Shout out Plugin Alliance, I'm a Plugin Alliance artist. Shout out Plugin Alliance, you know. Best plugins in the game. The uh, Kershaw EQ is my go-to EQ. I use it on everything, literally. You're not gonna find. Oh uh, man, everybody's still been trying to find out what you put on that bass that last video. That's that's the most requested thing ever. Is it? Okay, I'm gonna show y'all. You know what? Hey, you them. ain't gotta show them. Just show me. I got you. <laughs> show you. But yeah, nah, it's a it's plugin alliance for sure. Shout out plugin alliance. Also, roll off a little low. Very small cuts, by the way. I mean, of course, this is. But did you just see the, the the cut I did? That was very minimal. If I if I boost this on a, you see what I'm saying? That was very minimal. Mm -hmm. These are very minimal. So don't get up in here whacking, cutting things in half. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. 
Feel it, feel it, feel it, take it in there. Feel it, people. Let's see what else. I showed y'all the reason rack. I'm giving y'all real sauce. Let me see what else I can give y'all. Uh, what do we got here? Um, a melody. Let's go. Uh -huh. Gross beat. <laughs> the classic. I know your lips not sauce. Well, if you have these presets, they are. <laughs> I like to just do this. I like to just do like a side channel. I heard it popping, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna put some more effects on it. Get even more crazy. Uh, what is this? Where's Shaper Box? I like Shaper Box. I'm trying to really get y'all some sauce, but you know, we're on the clock. doing it. I need to trim it. And then we remember, um, we pitched these down, did we? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we pitched that one down. So what we can do is, we can, you know, we have multiple things, man. We can get crazy with it. So let's take this one, make it unique. And it's down 200 semitones, so we're gonna raise it up a uh, thousand to get it to go up another octave. And we're gonna play it with this. And let's do the same thing to this one. Well, I'm doing it on the second half, so let's do the same thing with this one too. I think his name is Andrew Schweppes. He's a big engineer. He makes for Jay Z and a bunch of people. And he he said, you know, starting out, challenge yourself. Try only mixing with pan, volume, and EQ. And I and I've been trying that out. And panning is just so underrated at times. That's a melody, people. We can get you know what I'm saying. Trap. We can go. We can go to the trap with that. Like you know what I'm saying. Like that. That has a home. It has a home. That has a home. We know where that's living at. You feel me? And now we have multiple parts. You see, we got like, I don't know the map, but like six elements in the beat now. Yeah, it's like six elements. So just be creative. Think outside the box. Pan, EQing, time shifting, um, sound degradation. It's so many things you can do, you know what I'm saying, to just spice it up. Saturation. You know
anyone dirty. All right, so there it is. We actually made a few little beats and we ran all of them through that very expensive analog chain and it came out sounding amazing. So if you want more videos like this, please let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.